Right, in the um, last video, we were looking at the causes of inequality and poverty. What I want to do in this one is to think about what can you do within an economy to tackle inequality and poverty. Before we do that, though, inequality and poverty. Let's think about the benefits and drawbacks from an economy perspective. Now, the benefits of poverty and inequality sounds like a nasty thing to be identifying benefits for, but what I would say is it's an incentive that can boost efficiency and productivity. Now, for an economy to be successful, we want people to be productive, go to job, work hard, because it will benefit the economy. It's like a big supply side improvement for an economy which can boost competitiveness, can boost GDP boost our exports across the world. Well, if you've got a gap between the rich and the poor, it should act as an incentive to make people work harder to go out and get that. Our pace to better themselves, get a better job, for example, buy that better house. So it could actually boost, I suppose linked to that one, the number of people who are economically active, forcing people to get off the bums and work hard for a living. You want what someone else has got, we'll go and earn it. Okay. Now here's the big problems though, and for me this is a much bigger list. Um, it's about opportunities. Okay, now if you're born into a poor background, and because of inequality you struggle to access things like education, good housing for example, good food, it would be very difficult for you to ever get the right skills, you know, to go to university for example, to become a high skilled worker. So you have to say that people who are born into a very unequal background, amongst the poorest people, these people will suffer to ever fulfil their potential. Now, think about why that's bad for an economy. It's poor human capital. If people don't fulfil their potential, they don't get the skills they could do, and they don't fulfil their potential, and ultimately it means that these people will never be able to contribute to as much of the economy as what we would expect or what we would like them to. So it holds back economic growth. It can make it very difficult for firms to get the right skills they need to progress. This could hold back things like foreign direct investment. MNCs will not want to come to an economy with poor human capital, for example. Um, other sort of problems of inequality and poverty. A lot of this is a bit cynical, but inequality can correlate with things like crime rates, it can hold back on things like development in an economy, and it could have a negative impact for firms. Now, you can view this in two ways. If you've got lots of people who are poor, who can't afford to buy goods and services, it means within your economy, you've got a smaller domestic market, less people that can afford to buy your goods and services. It's off of that one as well when it comes to recruiting people. Okay, you might get the benefit of cheaper workers, but you might not be able to get people with the skills that you need to progress in your economy. Okay, now, there you go. Then let's now think about what we can do about tackling poverty and inequality. Now, think about what the government can do. The government could simply provide people with more benefits in kind. So what I'm looking at here is things like giving people better access. Well, the benefits in kind, what are they? These are basically giving people support that's not a cash handout. It's about giving people access to things like education, healthcare, even leisure facilities, housing, for example. Things that people could have which could, I suppose, enable them to get the right skills that they need to go and better themselves. Uh, we can also give people cash benefits. Okay, now cash benefits could be income support. Okay, so we could be looking at things like unemployment benefits, for example. We could be giving people... Um, child benefits, so you know, um, a certain amount of money for every kid that you have, incapacity benefits for people that um, can't go out and work, you could give people working tax credits, which is basically taxing up people's incomes, 
um, which we deem to be too low. Um, we could even go for taxes. Okay, now, hopefully what you remember, there are two different types of taxes. We've got direct and indirect. A direct tax is tax on wages. And the good thing about these, in terms of inequality anyway, they tend to be progressive. Okay, they expect higher earners to pay a higher percent tax and low earners to pay a lower percent tax. So think about what you could do here, then you could lower how much tax burden falls on poor people and raise the burden on higher income people. Okay, now indirect taxes, these are taxes on expenditure, basically on goods and services, things like VAT. Now these tend to be quite regressive. In other words, they impact more on poor people than rich people because they form a bigger proportion of poor people's income. Or you, you, you could look to lower indirect taxes, which could help people. Now, what you've got here then, really, it's sort of financial interventions. So what are the problems of these? Well, if you give people too many cash benefits, for example, you've got the problem of a free rider problem. You're encouraging people to be economically inactive. Given the basics, but are you taking away that incentive to work? Direct taxes, if you make high income earners pay too much tax, these people are your more mobile people that could simply say, you know what, I'm not paying this tax, I'm going to go work abroad. And you could argue if you make high earners pay big taxes, you're taking away that incentive again to want to work hard in the first place. Um, other things that could be done then, you could use sort of more regulation. Again, it's still government, but regulation, you could have things like maximum, minimum wages. So you've got minimum wage in the UK, which is about to become a living wage. So enabling poor people to earn more money. Maximum wage, so you, you prevent how much money the top earners can earn in an economy. But what I would say is, again, it's extremely controversial. If you cap incomes, high earners will simply think, you know what, I'm going to go operate or work abroad.